Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Ohio State Esports channel. My name is Braden Ost. I'm joined today by Dom Mazzullo virtually. And today we have week three of our C-Lol season for the Ohio State Premier Team. Uh, got a big matchup against Dakota State looking to bounce back. Yes, sir. Ohio State is currently 1-1 one one last, last week. Bit of a crushing defeat. 1-2. Uh, two. Took it to the third game. Uh, sadly did lose though, but like you said, looking to bounce back from their loss up against uh, St. Thomas Blizzard last week. Uh, and yeah, should have a good game on our hands. Definitely a spicy meta nowadays. I'm excited to get into this draft. See these picks. I know we do have a uh, substitute jungler for Ohio State Esports, so may need to switch up their play style a little bit. Uh, pick things that maybe they're not as used to picking with this new player. Yeah, I believe, like you mentioned, Biogamer coming in instead of Miller68 this week. Um, a player that I'm actually pretty familiar with, uh, done some casting for him in the past, and good friend of mine. So definitely excited to see him get some action. Um, I believe also playing with a couple former teammates of his with the way the roster shift around. It, it should be interesting to see how you know how quickly they can pick that, uh, that back up because they do have that mojo together. Um, with that being said, we're hopping right into draft. Uh, Viego being taken away first. Yep, Biogamer definitely has a decent amount of Viego games. Uh, definitely a power pick. Uh, hard to play against, annoying to play against, a very fair ban. Yeah, and Blade of the Rune King actually just getting some recent changes, uh, getting a nice little buff. Uh, makes Viego's you know, two-item spike really, really strong, and I think it's definitely a, a very worthy ban. Following that up with the Vegar ban uh, from OSU, probably for Crimson, and uh, a Trundle ban from Dakota State. Yeah, and Janna as well banned away by OSU. Just got some changes, uh, pretty big changes to her kit, and she's been pretty strong, seen a lot of presence uh, just in the past few days. Zeri as well banned out, again, new champion, and... Uh, you know, definitely hard to play against if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So it's it's I think it's 100 percent worth a ban, especially uh, with Dakota State. You know, having some games on it, mostly or mostly with uh, Dragon. And now we'll see yep. what we get with the first pick. Looks like it is going to be that Jinx, just a, a really prevalent pick um, over the past few weeks. Honestly, it's been really since preseason, um, and it's it just works so well with uh, a lot of different comps, even just with lane pairings. It's it's very versatile. For sure, and I feel like a lot of teams nowadays, especially in this meta, are prioritizing the ADCs. I feel like the Jinx is super strong, the Caitlyn is super strong, the Zeri was banned away, the Aphelios and or Zeri just super strong hyper carries. These games are going late, the champions are scaling, It they're, it, it's going to pay off. Yeah. Oh, is she locking in the Aphelios? Yeah, I know uh, Steve definitely loves that Aphelios. I believe it's one of his more played <laughs> champions, and so I'm not surprised to see that, you know, uh, the matchup so far looking fine, but... We'll have to see. Ohio State definitely more than likely going to have to form a, a stronger identity around the Aphelios, I guess. They're more constrained by that Aphelios than Dakota State me, might be by the Jinx, but hopefully it should work out for them as we see Biogamer locking in that Hecarim that he definitely loves to play. Yeah, the classic. Definitely uh, one of his top three champs, maybe even his number one champ. Uh, I think it goes well with the Aphelios, actually. As long as you back up the Aphelios with some sort of front line, back room will serve as front line as well as engage. So, pairs well with the Aphelios. Dakota State entering back with the Amumu, uh, as well as the Victor. The teams. Yeah, I believe High Weebler does have a lot of Amumu games. Uh, so, I'm not surprised that he grabbed that one. They're definitely a bit out of the meta for now, but most likely not even going to be flexed down into support like we saw last season, you know, right. near the end, where it was able to at least be flexed, more so just taken mm -hmm. as a support, though. So, we'll have to see how that pays off for them. If his uh, just raw skill can, you know, make the pick work, or if it ends up being, you know, as an out of meta pick, I guess, uh, not, not as great as something else they could have maybe picked up. Yeah, there's definitely potential for these niche picks, especially if you're a one trick and like have mastery on whatever champ it may be. But sometimes you're just going to be a victim to the meta. I feel like a Mumu in the Hecarim is going to be it. tough, especially post six. Yeah, and Shumox are picking up the Silas as well. Actually, just recently featured on a uh, Synapse video on YouTube on the Silas with a pretty, pretty slick play. So I'll we'll have to spicy. see if we get some highlight real plays from this game. So we see uh, OSU opting into taking out a couple supports with the Thresh and Karma, both pairing really well with the Jinx, keeping her safe and buffing her up. Um, so really not surprised. Am, though, surprised to see the Corky ban. Uh, Shunmox are already locked in that Silas. I guess they are yeah. concerned about 
um, potentially OSU taking it top, but definitely an interesting ban for that last one there. Oh, and the Lulu to sort of round out this comp. Aphelios with an Enchanter, Hecarim with an Enchanter, especially anything that gives him movement speed. And just the pure value of Lulu here feels insane. Yeah, and assuming OSU is fine, keeping the Silas mid, it opens up a pretty wide pool of top laners, I think, for uh, OSU to pick to help out that front line. Bio obviously going to be be able to tank up quite a bit and disrupt uh, Dakota State. And, you know, with that Lulu keeping the Aphelios so safe, I think just, you know, something here with a little bit of beef to it will definitely do the trick. And it looks like Pop is going to be playing that Orn in the top lane. Has a decent amount of games on it. Definitely one of his most played champs. Also, just a fairly safe pick. Like, you can just kind of chill in lane. Play for being a massive rock of health late game and just CCing the rest of the team. So I think that's a pretty pretty good pick, especially if you have experience on it. Yeah. Let's see what they... The Blanc, Blanc being cover. hovered now. Very surprising. So okay. Inferno is going to be taking that Silas up into the top lane. Of course, used to be the premier mid laner um, and does still play, I think, a decent amount of mid lane. Definitely more comfortable on those mid lane champs. So I guess it's not too surprising to see that move up there. And Corky Ban, after all, would seem that it uh, paid off for Dakota State. So now we'll have to see how this Silas plays out um, into the Orn. You know, it's not, um, not a terrible matchup for him, especially being able to take Conquer and uh, out sustain him but you just do have to worry about early on the Ord can definitely uh trade you out of lane and uh really suffocate you sometimes under your own tower yep i'm personally very excited for this mid lane matchup i've been playing a lot of victor and it is not too fun of a matchup obviously leblanc's just kind of annoying victor's super strong right now so he's got that going for him but very excited to see how shoemaxter and how Crimson play this matchup, definitely volatile. Any lane with LeBlanc and a fairly mobile control mage is going to be pretty uh, going to be pretty lethal. So excited to see how uh, Shoemaxter kind of plays to his advantages in lane. Yeah. And, and as for the bot lane, thoughts on that? Yeah, so I was going to say, both teams really ended up uh, rounding out their compositions pretty well with that front-to-back team fighting style. Um, both teams with that Enchanter support, the Nami and Lulu, um, but then both ended up with a bit of a, a beefy front line. Dakota State definitely got the the better half of the the tank. The higher grade but, beef. Yeah, exactly. The choice rather than the uh, <laughs> rather than the uh, no prime rather than choice. There we go. That's right, that's what go. we're looking for. Um, but yeah, no, I think the Silas and Hecarim, you know, they both definitely have a lot more sustain than the Amumu Orn, so they can definitely still accomplish the same things, but they're looking for scrappier fights, um, whereas, you know, I think Dakota State will be better off just taking those all-in fights that happen quick and they can get their damage off quick, um, rather than OSU being able to sustain through it, especially with that Aphelios, um, you know, with the red gun, able to, able to sustain up as well, um, you know, it, it's just... I think it's definitely better for OSU in those longer fights. Uh, but with that being said, we are going to head to a short break before we hop into the first game. So with, uh, we will uh, see you on the other side of that. And welcome back, everybody. We are hopping right into game here onto the rift. Is Dakota State going to look to head with all five people up into the top lane? OSU spreading out more towards a five point start. We'll have to see where Dakota State wants to take this level one as they're taking a little bit more initiative here for sure. Are going to spot out Inferno here. Not too much going to happen besides a thumbs up. And uh, looks like they may just take their ba base from there. Yeah, Ochu Inferno kind of stopping any sort of cheese uh, Dakota State going for there. A lot of teams like to catch the top laner off guard there uh, in in pro play. They like to look for that or some sort of level one advantage they can catch. Good by Ochu Inferno, sticking to that five point, playing it safe. Yeah, off OSU guard. able to grab that ward onto the uh, Dakota State red buff as well. Should be helpful to get that information. Shootmoxer even sticking around potentially looking for a steal, but no, he's just going to grab the Raptor Ward as well. Should give them a lot of information onto this Amumu clear. Um, I obviously see him down there right now, most likely starting there, and it looks like Biogamer's just going to match on the other side as well with his blue buff. 
Yeah, so both junglers pathing to this top lane. We'll see if they're going to try and impact that lane the most. Uh, personally feel like if I were jungling, I would pass towards the bot. But if you're able to shut down this Ornn or shut down the Silas, especially shutting down the Silas, I feel like he will be substantially more useless. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with you that both of these junglers are very uh, well-versed as well, are very, very capable of doing a lot of damage in these bot lanes both carrying you know the enchanter supports they're both or they're all very squishy down there and so i think fights can you know get popped pretty quickly and uh i think you know i would think it would be pretty easy to find kills down there but instead both just gonna path path up to top and like you mentioned um definitely a pretty volatile lane up there silas able to get scaling so quickly if he gets ahead but also get you know pretty put behind and can have a lot of trouble in that side lane. It's now Inferno going on to Pop Pops, trading with the Abscond Abduct, and oh, now the King Slayer, the, the Ignite, and the Flash away from Pop Pops. Not going to be enough. First Huge. blood over to Inferno. That is really big for Inferno. Orn does have the TP to get back to lane, but might be caught in a bit of a bad position with the uh, next wave definitely crashing and Hecarim up there. Amumu will be there to stop it, but... Could be some shenanigans in the top lane. Yeah, really silly uh, trade from Pop Pop. Starting with just that refillable potion, relying on the Orn passive to buy an item later on in lane. Um, really had no trading power there, and despite that, went for a trade that ended up, you know, really screwing him over there, getting him killed in the end. So uh, a big, big play from Inferno, looking or noticing that and taking advantage of it as well. Yeah, and as you can see, the CS lead in the top lane, as of right now, is pretty disgusting he only has three minions uh to catch up so been fed equal amount of minions but oshi inferno taking the lead in that department as well pop pop's now oh. gonna go in but take another terrible trade bought that cloth armor control ward as well on his first back can't say i agree with that either maybe opting in for a ruby crystal even if you have to wait oh. until recall but now bruja in a bit of trouble steve going on him the with the switch of the guns the gets the root and the kill but now high and we or high weeble is here on the amumu does land the bandage toss lands a second one onto steve but he gets the heal oh. off and he's going to maybe get away but no dragon said hunter does get it gets excited and now maybe looking on to cyborg but in the top lane meanwhile inferno taking another good trade onto pop pops but oh, cyborg's Bio's back here. hitting him with the picks bio now looking potentially but the bandage toss lands onto high we oh, he's going. Bio, but still going he does not care he's rampaging around with those cues finds dragon lives. Sin Hunter. Now Inferno though not stopping. Going on to Pop Pops. Misses the abduct but still gets the kill with the wow. Kingslayer. On to Pop Pops. Bio now in a bit of trouble though. The Bandit Toss <laughs> lands onto him and High Weaveler <laughs> picks that up. But meanwhile Shootenboxer going in on Crimson Samurai in the mid lane. Gets the Electrocute, the electrocute. off. Gets him in the lethal range but with both still having Flash up. Doesn't want to look for the kill with those cooldowns. Oh my gosh. What a spicy early game. Both junglers collapsing on that crazy bot trade. OSU able to get the first kill on that Nami. Jinx following the Aphelios flash. Able to finish him off. But Hecarim coming in clean. Finishing it off. As well as that crazy scuffle in the top lane. Inferno once again coming out on top. Crashing yet another two waves in, under that orange turret. Just building up... Uh, near insurmountable lead it seems in the top side yeah pop pops in a lot of trouble up there now not even buying another item yet <laughs> still just has that cloth armor which isn't really doing much against the silas into who, silas yeah he's, he's got a lot of magic damage on his side oh, he's so. got bramble okay he's, he's got, got the bramble. bramble vest now i understand that definitely the grievous does help in these extended trades but pop pops doesn't even want to be taking those anyways oh, silas and his lane shoving out it's yeah he's in a he's in a really poor position but now steve gonna root dragon sin hunter the aqua person does miss now pop pop's trying to get away but now the ignite goes down <laughs> again inferno not gonna quite pick up the kill on that no he does oh, with the corrupting pot it. tick he does get the kill along with ignite does go down high weave alert not really able to do much there other than watch his buddy die and that is the third yep. time now that inferno has solo killed pop pops making a very smooth transition to top lane but now crimson samurai in a bit of trouble the gravity field goes down shoot monster gonna land the chain though it does get popped and now biogamer oh, just dead. gonna sit around take the kill from shun and dip out of his lane maybe help push out this wave shoot monster is low on mana and they're going to get this one in and feel pretty good about their position as a whole for OSU here. Top lane winning really hard. Mid lane now winning pretty hard. And bot lane doing just fine themselves as well. Yep. What a great gank by Biogamer. Very well played by Shunmaxter. Saving the E for after the flash. Able to land it. 
pretty much securing the kill. Didn't have to burn any summoners either and gets a flash out of Victor. So very, very high value gank there into the mid lane. And this top lane, like I said, it's no different. The Orn died with his lane shoving out. OSU Inferno able to secure the freeze. It is... It, oh. It's it's a sight to be seen. Yeah, Inferno now going in with the Epsconic Duck does <laughs> use up. the hijack to grab the Orn ult, but not going to quite use it yet. Is two levels up still and has that wave frozen. He's just been trimming it down to hold it in front of his tower. And Pop Pop's not even really able to get into experience range with how long the Epsconic Duck range can be for Inferno, especially adding in the W as well. But now he does pop the Orn ult, knocks him airborne, does go in, gets the Kingslayer for the execute <laughs> damage, and grabs his fourth kill of the game and his fourth stack on the Dark Seal as Biogamer picks up the Ocean Drag on the opposite side of the map. Really just putting on quite a clinic in the top lane, showing off those Silas mechanics, the mid lane prowess from Inferno, shining through in the top lane with this pick. Yeah, uh, or, you know, you did mention the, the nice little pickup on the Grievous potentially, but now grabbing another cloth armor... Not really <laughs> sure where he's at with that one. <laughs> Maybe Still he's not. just going straight for the uh, straight for the thorn mail. He doesn't even need another cloth armor for the thorn mail, so I have no, no. idea what he's doing. <laughs> he, hey, he's creative. He's trying to he's trying to bounce it back. He's he's trying something new. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe he thinks that you know the Silas so far ahead might get cheeky and try out non-hit build this game, and he's gonna be ready <laughs> for it. He's there. He's ready to he's go. Ready but now it. Shun grabs a ward on the enemy blue buff. Inferno still holding that freeze in the top lane, giving him some Mia pings, because he knows that there is nothing that this Orn can do to him. Up now, almost yeah. 40 CS. Yep, mid lane. Mid lane, uh, looking to be about a 20 CS lead, so pretty good there by Shu and Moxter. Jungler's fairly even here. The move have been able to pace well with the Hecarim, which is fairly surprising, as Hecarim's clear is... Very fast, I'd say, comparative to Amumu. So good on him. He's been able to contribute. I feel like uh, if Amumu definitely focuses more on this uh, bot side, which he probably Ooh, will. Moonlight Vigil goes Moonlight. wide, splits the up rates on the Dragon and Bruja. <laughs> Not going to skip Pretty a beat. cooldown for the spot yeah. lane 2v2. It's but now Biogamer oh. uses the Unstoppable Onslaught onto High Weebler. Is now stuck a bit. Lands a bandage toss, but doesn't really get anywhere. And now the ethereal er, ethereal chain's gonna get the kill onto High Weebler. But in the bot lane, Steve getting dove using both sums, but still going down to Dragon and Bruja. A big pickup for Dakota State, trying to scale this Jinx ahead, who's you know so strong just as a champion and so easy to get ahead with the get excited passive, able to get a lot of kill resets in fights, and definitely is still a really scary. Uh, Scary aspect of this game for Ohio State. Schumacher does have the chains miss. Gravity Field goes down, but uses the old Mine's chain. A second chain. Gets no the flash. ignite down, and with red buff, just going to auto attack the uh, victor to death. Not really anything Crimson Samurai could do there. It's now Inferno yep. up four levels onto Pop Pops. Does have the Curse of the Sad Mummy, uses it there, and High Weebler flashes in for the bandage toss, but he might have just killed himself. High Weebler now running away from does Inferno, does one get one the chilling smite off, and is able to run away with that. But now the Absconded Duck going in, he does miss it. And High Weebler gonna live by the skin of his teeth, trying to grab that Rift Herald from crashing again onto their tower. Dragons and Hunter now, though, up here. Bruja as well. High Weeb Alert looking on the chase, but Inferno just going to dash away for now. But now he goes back in. He does get exhausted. The actual Curse of the Sad Mummy goes down, and Amumu gets the shutdown onto Inferno. A big, big 850 gold shutdown for High Weeb Alert to maybe, you know, look to do something with. Of course, playing the tank, not the best person for him to give it to. Uh, the Jinx grabbing that would have been perfect for them. But either way, they do get the kill as Inferno oversteps, trying to get a greedy kill there instead of taking his base. Yeah, uh, very well played by the Amumu there. Pretty uh, intelligent by him. No CS his bot lane coming up, able to secure the shutdown. That long scuffle where the Jinx... And Nami traded the kill onto the Felios. I thought that was going to be really good for Cyborg Dakota State. Cyborg and Steve until... now waiting for Crimson, though. Does go into melee range with that uh, red gun. Gets the root off. And now the Moonlight Vigil once again goes wide. But will it be enough? The Death Ray finishes Steve off under the tower. Going for a very aggressive play. Now Cyborg in a bit of trouble. Does get Aqua Prison. Support but Bruja, baby. Biogamer down there. Does use the Unstoppable Onslaught under the tower. Doesn't care. Gets the Rampage kill. And now Biogamer with his third kill of the game, looking to snowball just as far as High Weebler does. Shunmox are now behind they Dragon, the though. Pop Pops does... No, I'm sorry, Crimson teleporting down there, and Ohio State gonna take what they got. 
and head on out of there. Maybe like Double set TP. up this dragon. Pop ups, yeah, you're right. Also TPing down there. Helping out the team, I guess, giving some moral support and setting up for this mountain drag up in about 35 seconds. Yeah, level six on this Orn. Big cooldowns gone for the side of OSU. Both the Moonlight Vigil and the uh, Hecarim all not available. A Moonlight all not ready either. So pretty, pretty Soon even fight now, here though, besides, of course, the 5k maybe. gold Bandage lead. Toss does miss. Dakota State's got all five members down here while Inferno is looking on that inner tower top lane. Biogamer still coming from base and Steve pushing out that bot wave means that Dakota State's going to get priority on this dragon pit. Drops two pig wards just for safety onto the pit. Mm. But Inferno just beating this tower on the top lane, going to get himself 550 gold here for free pretty much. Doesn't have TP up and it looks like OSU might just want to give this dragon. So yeah, OSU trading the top inner turret and even moving all their resources to the top side and maybe hitting the inhib not hitting the inhib but train the inner turret for the dragon uh honestly they're so ahead i don't see why they don't fight that besides of course that silas is doesn't have tp and his top side yes yeah, but i guess the giving the drag course, not that bad get out of the zap range there otherwise he would have been in some trouble but yeah like you mentioned biogamer also able to grab that top side jungle it really ends up being a pretty even trade for them i don't think they're too worried about dakota state being able to stack up to souls super quickly and so I think at the end of the day, it's it's a pretty good trade for them. Uh, it allows Inferno to really move away from that top lane. He doesn't really have much uh, left up there to grab. And so now that they're able to play with him, they could maybe even look on to, you know, the second Herald spawn um, and even Baron in a few minutes here. Yeah, I assume they're just going to try and force Baron close to spawn with this lead. Don't want to throw anything. Don't want to let that Victor Jinx scale into Oblivion. Definitely want to try and close these games out quick. The games where the enemy just looks like scales better than you. And I think this is definitely the case for Oshu. Yeah, Pop Pops did pick up those Merc Treads. Should help out with taking a little bit of Inferno's <laughs> edge off. But I'm not sure it's going to really be enough at this point in the side lane. As Biogamer now going in the Unstoppable Onslaught onto both Bruja and Dragonson. Both going down to either to different parties on OSU. And now the Curse of Sad Mummy used against High Weeb Alert. And Inferno going to grab a double kill, grabbing four more stacks for that Dark Seal, and most likely claiming the spot lane outer tower for OSU. Wait, does he have Elixir? Um, it looks like right? it. Yeah, it, you're right. It does look like he has that. So maybe grabbing that Elixir of Sorcery. I'm not sure. I couldn't quite see the damage numbers onto the tower to see if he had that true damage going off, but... Wouldn't be terrible if pickup. so, very smart. Yeah, definitely yeah. a good pickup. Although I will say, you know, with the with no objectives really on the map, they, they kind of just had to hope that that fight was going to happen, that they could force that. Otherwise, it might yeah. have been a bit of a waste. But obviously, when he's ahead as he is, you know, he doesn't have to worry about yeah, it Yeah, nobody much. can test it. I guess I'm thinking more so nobody, like, can in, uh, contest him in the side. So he just gets to hit turrets for free. He gets even additional value out of the uh, side lane he's doing with the pot. Although it is 500 gold. Definitely arguable, but uh, interesting pick as we see LeBlanc up here farming her waves, making sure waves are shoved as they are looking to move towards this Rift Herald. Does have an objective bounty on it for the side of Dakota State, so denying that denies the actual objective as well as a bunch of free yep. gold. Inferno now going on to Dragonson Hunter, though, just blowing him up using his just full combo, dead. and he's just down. Now Inferno going back in, has the Chaos Storm, drops it down, but gets cursed by the Sad Mummy. High Weebler staying on him, but still so low. Steve doing a lot of damage now. The Moonlight Vigil and the Gale Force in gets Big. the damage off. Pop Pop's in a lot of trouble now. Biogamer and Shun jumping onto him, and Inferno keeping the onslaught going as Biogamer picks Dang. up the ace, wipes Dakota State, and OSU is going to look for yeah. this Herald and mid tower, it looks like. OSU sitting on a 10k gold lead, nearly 11k. About to get the Rift Herald, break open more towers, and get themselves an even bigger lead here. Not looking too good for the side of Dakota State. Yeah, Pop Pop's still really struggling to get online. Unfortunately, that frontline, you know, fantasy that they'd thought about in this draft with the Amuma and Orin keeping the Jinx Victor safe is just not really working out because he has so little gold. He's not able to uh, really tank much of the damage that OSU has to put out. Plus, with their big advantages, you know, they just have so much, uh, so many stats that it's hard for anyone really to tank them, even if they weren't behind like High Weebler kind of was. Yeah. Two items on this Silas with a 10 stack Dark Seal. Interested to see if he's going to end up going for the Magi's. I think it's definitely a, a, not even BM, but 
Definitely a little cocky oh, well, he if he does. It up. <laughs> there you he go. He picked it up. Okay. He's definitely confident in himself. Got to respect that. But definitely going to have to watch his toes a bit. Can't get too greedy or he'll be losing a lot of gold. Although, when your team's up nearly 11k gold, does much really matter at this point. Yeah, and I think, you know, with this dragon fight coming up, most likely, if Dakota State even opts to fight it, I'm not sure whether they can or whether they should, but they almost need to. Either way, though, mm -hmm. going to be a good place to, you know, look for a pretty big fight. And um, I definitely think that, yeah, like you said, it's risky, but also with, you know, Victor going Crown of the Shattered Queen, I think Jinx is really the only threat to kill him with all the sustain that he has, you know, right now, and even the tankiness just with Everfrost and Cosmic Drive. Um, I think he's really, for the most part, just going to be fine unless he has five people hitting him at once to really not right. die in a lot of these fights. Definitely. Looking like OSU is going to try and force this drag as they should. Inferno going oh, in on to High Weebler though bot. now. Gets stunned up by the Curse of the Sad Mummy and the Chaos Storm goes down, but High Weebler is already dead. Crimson Samurai oh. is next. The Chaos Storm still following, but the Kingslayer oh, healing over. him for so much. Using that passive and Biogamer <laughs> goes unstoppable, saying hello and Gosh. grabbing the kill. Bruja now in a, a lot of trouble as Shunmoxer oh. drops the Sigil of Malice with the ult and just pops her. Bruja down wow. and Dragon Sit Hunter looks like he is going to be next up. The Moonlight Vigil does go wide, but Steve still picks it up with the Gale Force. And Biogamer now dropping the Herald bot lane and looking for potentially a charge onto this uh, bot lane inhibitor tower. Yeah, they get the dragon for free. They don't blow any sums other than the Silas Ignite for those, what, four kills it was? Yeah. So pretty, pretty compelling gameplay here from Ohio State. Definitely uh, telling their opponents that we came to play. Yeah. Uh, Shunmaxter also picking up a Morello, has 11 stacks on it, Silas 16 stacks. It's, it's going to be a race to 25, I think. It's going to be know. a race to 25. <laughs> <laughs> Shunmaxter definitely has that lower CDR with the uh, Deceive, um, but we'll have to see you will have to see which one's able to pick it up first. Inferno, obviously, not afraid to hop into these fights, even if there's two right. or three of them. So a lot of potential kills there, but Shun able to pick people off so easily and so often that, you know, it's questionable. But now High Weebler does miss the bandy as <laughs> Shun Monster heads back to the W pad. Just LeBlanc things, right? Yeah, exactly. You, you got to play with your opponent's emotions, right? Shun Monster, though, now still staying bot lane looking for high weebler here he's walking into the bush Can he kill him i don't think so not quite not with one round especially with not those mercs with, yeah. inferno though looking in the top lane maybe crimson samurai walking up a bit oh. too far does get hit by the scotto duck the everfrost goes off and now inferno Frost has the crown. chaos storm pops crimson bruja next up but no pop pops lands the ult onto inferno but it doesn't matter inferno still going forward oh dropping gosh. the kingslayer getting even more thriving. conqueror healing now going off high weebler kingslayer again giving him healing that wild growth gives him some more health but the curse the sad mummy is finally going to knock him down oh, kills him. biogamer <laughs> still gets revenge on high weebler and pop pops is the last man standing the unstoppable onslaught though from biogamer not showing any mercy as he goes down ohio state wipes dakota state in game one and wipes the color off of their screen as they march towards this middle lane inhibitor and potentially the end of the game here I, I think uh, Dakota may be able to defend here just with the victor wave clear has the ult. I think they just take two inhibitors, dip out, and probably just look to get the bear. Yeah, Cyborg reset. in a bit of oh, trouble. Crimson. Crimson flashing forward. The Super Mega Death Rocket and the Chaos Storm both oh. don't quite kill him. He barely gets away, and Shunmox are now dominating on this LeBlanc. Another big burst of damage. The Moonlight Vision once again going down, <laughs> chunking out Dakota State. Biogamer is still so low on mana, but it doesn't matter. High Weevil aren't looking. Here. Yeah, Bandage Toss goes in, and now Steve in a lot of trouble, wondering mm. what he's doing there. But either way, the rest of them got to head out of there and maybe look to reset, make one final play in this game, maybe on this Baron or even the Dragon if they want to wait a couple minutes. Yeah, definitely a bit greedy as Steve there, just uh, kind of pressing R, running up to them and hitting them a bunch. Uh, when he kind of just can't, doesn't have any Lulu uh, mana or health to really help him out there. Bio didn't have any CDs, so a bit of an int from the Aphelios, but... In the long run, don't think it'll matter. Up to a 16 or 15.5, nearly K gold lead for Ohio State. Uh, it looks like they're marching towards that Baron. Yeah, Steve may be definitely feeling a bit jealous of his team here. The only one with a negative KDA. I definitely understand the feeling. <laughs> 
I've been there many times before. Wanted to get in on the action, but uh, definitely stepping a bit too Just far. Just couldn't. <laughs> Biogamer going to help out yeah. soon with this blue buff. And really, Dakota State just being starved of everything at this point. Inferno going to walk back as you see all five members of Dakota State walking over. But in the meantime, OSU just going to start up this Baron on the other side. Dakota State has no agency on the top side of the map. They barely have any vision. And fortunately for them, not really going to be able to contest this Baron at all. Steve is over the wall, going to blast going in now finally to start DPSing it. But with Bio, especially with the picks on him, going to just melt this pretty quickly. Crimson Samurai gets his crown broken there. Jinx walking up as well. The Ornhorn comes in. High Weebler goes in onto Bio. Oh. Smite goes down a little bit too early. And now Bio Gamer going to be a little bit stuck. Pop Pops, though. High Weebler not really going to have the damage. And now Inferno's here. Cavalry has arrived. And the wave comes in a bit too late. Not able to drown them out. And OSU picks up four kills and the Baron here. Almost certainly going to be seal in this game. Yeah, it really doesn't even matter. Pop Pop trying to make that last minute desperation play, trying to redeem Ooh, himself. Bye. And oh, it's just nailing the coffin, taking down the Nami. The final member of Dakota State falls. They're gonna farm their uh, uh, structures destroyed eternal here and get every tower, every in hit pop possible. And looks like OSU is gonna take game one. Yeah, Dragons and Hunter gonna try and stop it here. High Wave Alert also going in with the Bandage Toss. Defend. Pop Pops, maybe, with the Bellows Breath, the Curse of the Sad Mummy as well, but now Inferno has one of his own. Will he drop it though? Not quite yet. Biogamer dropping a bit low, has no mana, but Inferno's still there. Does go into the stasis a bit low and the, the gravity field goes down, but the Kingslayer gonna heal him up. Pop Pops trying to chase him down. No way. Lands it, gets the Curse of the Sad Mummy off, but does go down and Dakota <laughs> State stands with about a quarter of the HP on their Nexus. Dakota State, led by Pop Pops, who struggled earlier on, able to make a stand and really bring them, you know, not necessarily back into this game, but certainly keep it going a little bit longer. Steven Cyborg gonna look onto this Infernal Dragon, but Crimson and Bruja not gonna let it go uncontested. Does drop a death ray over the wall, but it's blind and the tidal wave as well coming in, trying to grab this dragon. Definitely a lot of desperation plays there. The Chaos Storm as well. <laughs> burning it down, but Biogamer just going to walk by and smite it easy for 900 damage. And now uh, Crimson and Bruja without any ultimates going to be in a bit of a pickle here. If OSU really wants to, they probably could just run at the Nexus and be fine, but they're going to play it a bit smart. Cyborg going to take a reset as he hasn't yet, and Inferno just respawning now. Going to head out of the base and see what they can do from here. Yeah, not, not really too much to say right now. OSU taking their waves, shoving their waves out, taking their final resets before they try and just end with the last couple of seconds they have left on this Baron. Don't see them being stopped here unless Dakota State pulls out some sort of miracle. Yeah, I will say Shun and Inferno both going down there means they both <laughs> dropped to 15 stacks on the Magi's. So we might get a little bit of a redo on this race. Shun actually taking a little bit low there by Crimson. So strong on the Victor, but now OSU Inferno has the Orin ult, and he's ready to drop it. Dragon Center walking up pretty far. Does get the zap. Moonlight Vigil once again oh, goes vigil. wide. That's not a new thing, but Inferno goes in with the Orin ult. Biogamer diving oh, in as well. Huge. So much damage going on to the Dakota State. Pop Pops tries to stay alive. High Weebler trying to tank up all the damage in the front line. Curse the Sad Mummy goes down, but it's not going to be enough. They don't stop enough of them. And unfortunately, OSU takes down Dakota State. A great, demanding, dominating first game from uh, Ohio State there. And, you know, just a great performance yeah. all around, really from all three lanes. Yeah, all three lanes. I feel like at maybe the three-minute mark, once the junglers had completed their first uh, camps before the scuttle spawn, literally there was a skirmish in every single lane that brought uh, one or two of the laners. I think Orin died in the top lane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, AD, the ADCs died. It was definitely a spicy game at the beginning and it looked like dakota was in it for a bit until that orn maybe walked back top died two more times bot lane lost a bit lost another scuffle and it just kind of fell out of their hands yeah i believe we had six kills at the four minute mark it was crazy <laughs> early on and ohio yeah. state took advantage of that you know took their leads and knew what to do with them really um, so, you know, it was just a great performance from the, um, all the all around. And if they can just keep, you know, yeah. half of that going into the second game, I think they'll have a pretty good shot. So with that being said, we are going to head into a quick break before we see game two. And uh, we'll see you all in just a few minutes.
And welcome back, everybody. We are here getting ready for game two of CLO week three for Ohio State versus Dakota State this week. Definitely a dominating performance to come out of the gates with for OSU. Uh, so let's, we'll have to see if uh, Dakota State can turn it around or if OSU keeps the train moving. Yeah, I know we do have a best of three today. So definitely excited to see the second game. See if Ohio State can maybe close it out or if Dakota can kind of redeem themselves a bit from that first showing, show what they have to offer, whip out their picks and execute them. Yeah, you know, we mentioned High Weeble are uh, playing a lot of a moo moo, um, you know, in solo mm -hmm. queue and stuff and not feeling uh, not feeling any regret about picking it in that game. Definitely was a bright spot, I think, for Dakota State. Uh -huh. So we'll have to see if OSU, d you know, decides to take it away, leaves it up. Obviously, it didn't, you know, have a big enough impact to actually, you know, win them the game. But it certainly was, you know, something that they could potentially build around. And if OSU is looking for something to take away, definitely something, you know, they could look at. Yep. And we'll see if Dakota will uh, try and take away that Silas that OSU Inferno had quite the performance on. Looks like they're going to take away the Trundle. We do have Miller in for Biogamer, so an OSU jungle substitution. They do have very similar champion pools, so the bans may not change around a bit for those. Looks like they're still going to ban the Hecarim, ban the Trundle there, a Miller special, and ban the Silas away from us. While we return with, once again, another Vagar Janna Zeri ban, I'm pretty sure it's the same bans we had from OSU uh, in the first draft. So nothing too crazy there. We'll see what OSU wants to first pick here, though. Yeah, can't blame OSU for not wanting to switch up the draft from last game. Definitely worked out right. well for them there. And that Silas takeaway, I think, is so big for Dakota State, just because it is such a big flex between Inferno and Shun, being both so comfortable on it. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a lethal thing uh, when it comes to teams having two of the same role mains. They have similar champ pools and can flex it. A Mausahar pick into the Jinx, I think it's a great idea. And the Pike as well. Jinx very immobile. Malzahar just pressing R and stunning her in a team fight could be game changing. And Pike definitely an annoyance in lane, able to uh, kind of take advantage of the fact that Jinx doesn't have a dash other than maybe the Gale Force. Yeah. But the Galio is left open. Now Corky gonna and be locked Corky. in though. Yeah, for Shun, I know he loves that Galio. He plays a lot of it, especially in solo queue, and it actually was left up in favor of the Silas ban this game. So it's <laughs> definitely an option for them. But like you, uh, you know, I wanted to touch base on the Pike that you were talking about. Um, it's definitely, you know, it can be a great way to shut down the Jinx as Master Rocker being hovered for OSU. But I think that, you know, it's really punishable. If they don't get really far ahead on the pike, I think it becomes a big problem for Dakota State because I think they end up not really having much of an answer to the Jinx Soraka, especially Corky as well in the mid game with so much range. Now Yumi being hovered by Dakota State already with the pike locked in. We'll have to see how this shapes up. I think it may be a meme, maybe referencing the uh, Soraka <laughs> pick, which by the way, Soraka pick definitely a bit questionable in my opinion, just because Assuming it's being put into the pike, uh, gonna have some trouble there. Pike lands a single hook on you. Looks like they're gonna switch off the Yumi and just go straight for the Amumu. Like you said, a bright spot for Dakota in game one. But uh, definitely a questionable draft, in my opinion, at least for the first three picks of OSU. Yeah, I mean, they, they keep a big rage advantage over the uh, over Dakota State, and they do ban out the Yumi out of respect. They are, <laughs> of course, hovering it there. Um, don't want to see that one. But yeah, I think that the range advantage, you know, in these team fights could be great, especially if OSU is able to pick up um, some tools to help them disengage, uh, you know, in these last two picks. But like you mentioned, right. the Soraka, not a great pick into Pike for the lane, I don't think. Definitely both, you know, having two squishies can be a problem for them um, because the Pike can reset and burst them both down so easily. There's not really a safe space for Jinx to stand in front of a support, for example. Um, to, to help stay away from that pike in a 2v2. Yeah, I would have for sure like to see some sort of bruiser tank top lane here for OSU and something maybe like a Zin Zhao or J4 for the uh, uh, for the side of OSU as well, for the jungle. But I don't know what we're gonna see. Yeah, OSU banning out two more supports in that second round of bans. Very interesting with that pike already locked in. They must know something maybe that we don't. Uh, maybe thinking that Pike's headed somewhere else besides support, but now Kled being covered and locked in for the top lane. Definitely a very strong pick in the early game for Pop Pops in the top lane, and you know may help uh, quell some of his issues that 
they had up there in game one, especially so early on. He didn't really even have a chance to show off some of you know his tools in the mid game just because it was such a big deficit early on. And so that Clyde might definitely you know help out with getting past that tougher point in the early game and being able to make some more plays around the map with the uh, ultimate. Sure, and also Pop Pop's most played champ this rank season. Looks like they're gonna pick up the Jax and the Kled. Uh, you know anything about the specific matchup, Braden? I know you're you delve on the top line. Yeah, so I think this is actually a great pick for OSU. The you know the Kled plays around his W so much with that passive, and he can't really control how he uses it. If he doesn't, he he has to sacrifice, I guess, hitting his wave and even controlling his wave um, to keep that W off cooldown. And so as soon as he uses that W, Jack's able to just use the counter strike and basically hold it for the duration of Kled W. And unfortunately, with so much of his damage packed into the uh, W, he's just not going to be able to get a lot of that damage off in the duels. And I think he's going to actually really struggle into the Jacks. As for the final team comps here, OSU's team comp definitely confuses me a bit, but also kind of makes sense. They want to run in with the uh, Olaf and the Jax, but have the Jinx and Corky peppering them with Soraka healing. But I feel like if a Mumu or Pike or even Kled shows up anywhere on the back line, the lack of peel for the Corky, the Jinx, and the Soraka may just not work into Dakota's on top of you comp they had the amumu with the bandage toss the kled with the e the pike just all over everybody at all stages of the game and to top it off a of blitzcrank so it looks like it was the pike mid yeah so i was gonna mention we have pike mid and malzahar adc so i guess osu didn't know what they were doing banning out those two supports in the uh second half of the draft there i i guess i'm surprised i can't say i have much insight on those matchups but uh, yeah, I Me definitely, either. the Olaf pick is definitely a little bit um, confusing because, you know, we were talking about the disengage that OSU might want to pick up and just play around that range that they'd already picked up. You know, uh, Dakota State already didn't have many answers for uh, the poke and the, the long range champs that OSU had grabbed. And so I'm surprised they didn't fully commit to that and instead opted into two champs that really just want to run in or, you know, the Jacks may be more side laning, but either way, shorter range champs that don't really have much too many tools to help out their team um if they're being dove on in a team fight yeah i definitely have a feeling that dakota is just going to put all their resources in the bot side here once kled hits six i feel like he's just going to be pressing r down there pike mid definitely roam that's, that's what i think when i think yep. Pike mid he's going to be on the map he's not going to be mid he's going to be killing a wave maybe leaving one or two maybe just sacking his wave under the tower and making things happen and when you draft Mousehar blitzcrank especially post six but even pre six just because it's blitzcrank fairly lethal if a third member shows up so much cc decent amount of damage not too much early but if a pike shows up definitely enough damage to just completely annihilate a drink soraka yeah i'm really interested to see how this pike mid works you know it's been changed up a bit and so it's definitely out of meta for now um, but with that being said, we are going to head to a quick break before we hop onto the Rift. And so we'll see you all on the other side of that. All right. And we are back, headed on to the Rift for game two of today's best of three series. Looks like Dakota State once again going to group up together, but OSU deciding to do the same thing. Different parts of the map, they're just going to hold their position at their red buff. I guess anticipating Bruja to lead Dakota State into their bot side and maybe looking to pick them out here. I love this. I think this is very creative, very smart. You can kind of assume with the Blitzcrank you're going to do some cheeky stuff level one. And now I think what OSU we see? Yeah, the Equinox is huge, huge there. Equinox. And the stun <gasps> as well from the Counter-Strike. This is over oh for Dakota gosh. State. Ohio State with a massive level one here. Pop Pop's taking super low. High That's Wave Lord as well. A triple kill over to Miller and another oh. kill over to Steve. Wow. This game what? is already starting off somehow even better for OSU than Whoa. last game as it's five to one. It looks like Inferno did go down there, but not before getting off a four or five man counter strike there, I think. Right <laughs> out of the bush, OSU knew exactly what they were doing there and executed it nearly perfectly. What a great showing to never level an ability when you're sitting in Fountain, just got into a game. If Soraka hadn't landed a 
five man equinox i don't think all five die there nobody's able to flash out nobody's able to get an instant ability off they're all just standing there in the middle of five people what a great play from osu cyborg yeah and jinx got getting two of those kills is huge uh, yeah like, coming the lane with an extra cloak of agility <laughs> definitely a really big pickup is now inferno gonna take the counter strike onto pop pops Bear trap on a rope does not land, and it's going to be another good trade for Inferno up in the top lane. Oh, level two gang. Very cheeky here from a Yeah, the flash bandy, but Cyborg gets out of there. Steve going to get exhausted here by Dragons and Hunter and okay. just kind of walk away. Definitely a greedy exhaust there. Steve really wasn't committed to anything, and to always see you able to walk away from that, very, very happy, I think, in the bot lane. Yeah, it looks like and Bruhaw now the heal going down. Man. The flash is well flashed over the hook, but Dragons and oh. Hunter able to flash away. Drop a little emote spam and take a reset. Maybe try and reset this bot lane and look to push their advantages. Like you mentioned, you know, it's pretty strong early on, especially with their pick potential. Miller, though, now finding oh, High no Weebler onto the Raptor pit. And Miller oh, just going to grab him. Already on a rampage here at 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Inferno looking on now oh. with the counter strike. The dash does get canceled and gets a nice little trade, but the hook finds Cyborg behind the minions. The glacial not going to be able to slow him down quite enough, and no kills go down, but another big play. Now in the top lane, Inferno maybe in a bit of trouble, taking a pretty rough trade there. That Kled W able to get off with the counter strike down and deal a lot of damage. Shun now pushing in the mid wave though, and Inferno and Pop still going at it in the top lane. The bear trap on a rope does land. The counter strike now going in, but he does dash away. And now gets unmounted under his tower as Miller looks to make a play up here. Yeah, just look at this jungle matchup already. Miller recalled and got the team out. Crazy. Yeah. Easy dive here. Enough health on both the top laner and jungler to just pull that off. No mount for the Kled. Miller already sitting on the, what is that item called? The, uh, the Iron Spike Whip. Yeah, the Iron Spike Whip. Getting the... Easier clear, literally level one, as well as just the damage. Able to invade, take a Mumu's whole top side. Up 16 CS. Yeah, 20 now. Yeah, 16 CS, <laughs> 20 now. Uh, quick math, not my strong yeah, suit. Quick. But, um, <laughs> uh, and it looks like Shoemaxter might be able to pull a freeze here. It look, goes to just clear some of the minions, but Miller may be looking mid here. Pike going to be in a bad spot soon. Yeah, you could see Pop even right there trying to clear out that control ward. Had to blow the W to be able to auto it. You know, he can't control when it goes off. And so he has to actually dash away to even be safe from Inferno there, knowing he can't take really any sort of trade there. Unfortunately, it's just the downside of playing the Kled and why it isn't seen a lot, especially blind picked. Inferno now looking on with the counter strike, though. Gets a nice little trade on the Pop Pops, but the W is back up and the bear trap on a rope lands. Oh. Inferno in a bit of trouble here. He does dismount, though, and Pop Pops does get flashed on but the q does not quite kill so close for pop pops trying to get his revenge so in that top close. lane finally <laughs> unfortunately not quite able to finish it off there crimson samurai now looking for a little trade with the bone skewer on the shoot but not gonna see too much other than even trade steve go grabs oh, grabbed lands. by gets grabbed by bruja the equinox goes down to prevent anything further from happening but now we see two junglers in the bot lane both interested in the play weeb alert now in a bit of trouble though the undertow lands, lands. yeah miller gonna pop the ghost and just melt down this amumu next up is malzahar oh. zap lands as well he's slowed down bruja saying sorry standing behind him and does land a hook drops the ignite but not gonna be really too close to killing him there and two more big kills for osu down in the bot lane predicting exactly what Dakota State wanted to do and taking big advantage of it. Yeah, Miller averaging right now over one kill a minute here in this game. Definitely a, another very nice start here for OSU. We'll see if Dakota can do anything to come back from this. Uh, they definitely will have opportunities. It's still early. Uh, Malzahar is not six yet. Maybe able to secure a shutdown onto this Jinx once he is six, but as for right now, they just need the to flash respect, hook respect, does respect not the flash land. Hook and now Shun gonna use the Valkyrie to get out of the Pike E, but now the bandage shots lands on him. He doesn't have but any Miller's escapes here. left. Ignite goes down and the old will pick it up. But Miller is now here to clean up, goes godlike here, and now looks onto Crimson Samurai, who drops the death from below and gets away with the stun for now. 
We'll have to see. Does pick up the axe there, gets the undertow off, and slows him down. And one more will make him legendary. Legendary. At six and a half minutes, that is a speedrun world record if I've ever seen one for Miller 68 wow. in the jungle. Super well played. Like we said, as soon as we saw that level one, it is definitely going to be an uphill battle. And uh, the, the most uphill it can be here for <laughs> Dakota with OSU capitalizing on that huge lead, the f four kill lead they got in the early game and showing how to really just uh, apply pressure when you yeah, get Yeah, choppers go down, hit early. both Bruja and Dragon Scent Hunter has to flash away and Cyborg's auto won't quite kill. The Super Mega Death Rock gets blocked and now High Weebler and Crimson Samurai are here for the cleanup. Hook lands hook onto lands. Steve. The bandage toss as well. He's stunned up, does get the zap, but <gasps> it misses just barely. Would have taken down Dragon Scent Hunter who pops level seven mastery. Certainly one bright spot, I guess, for them in this game. Inferno looking to maybe crash this top way now and either look for a reset or a play, but no. Miller now, though, lands the undertow. No R for Miller here. I think he just wins it. I think so as well. High Weebler does get the smite onto the blue buff for some health, but it doesn't matter. These axes are doing so much damage. High Weebler has to flash out, and now Crimson Samurai maybe in a bit of a pickle. So slippery, though, on this pike. Able to get away for now. Drops a thumbs up and not really spotted out anymore. Miller just going to try and grab this blue buff. Sticking around still, maybe a bit risky. Yeah, definitely a bit risky, but with Cyborg here, I think he's And he grabs fine. the blue buff. Just kill a Moo Moo. He's able to pop the Ragnarok, get that bonus AD, gets a double kill already, looking at a Bruja now, grabbing that last auto for a triple kill for Miller. Surprisingly, not his biggest kill streak of the game. Grab that quadra kill earlier, or that triple kill earlier, excuse me. I'm gonna grab this Gromp as well. He's 11 and 0 at eight minutes, and it's not even close. I'm very curious to see it, the gold grab here, how much, just how much gold Miller has comparatively to Amumu. It's been really rough for this Amumu. He got invaded when he was level two. He had used his flash in the level one scuffle and Miller came back with the iron spike whip. Nothing the Amumu can do and he will just sit <laughs> <laughs> and sit in his jungle until this game is over. Crimson Samurai coping with the thumbs up and some emote spamming, missing the bone skewer on Miller. <laughs> Not sure even Definitely wanted reminding to land us it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely reminding us this is all for fun. Exactly. Bruja oh, lands oh, Bruja. Oh, another crazy hook. hook. He weaving. The, the Malefic Vision small go down onto Steve. He gets suppressed, suppressed by the Nether Grasp. Not quite going to go down to the Ignite, though. And now Inferno ignites Pop Pops, who's now dead in the top lane. High Weeb Alert runs up there to try and help out. But once again, it's not quite enough. Oh, Bruja, he looking. Yeah, he's still looking. He's on the hunt, trying to grab him in pursuit. But now High Weeb Alert going to bandy toss into the top wave. But Miller is here, down three oh, levels on both of them. Miller goes legendary once again. Nothing new here, though. Grabbing his 12th kill. Amumu notably has Moby Boots this game. Tried to get around the map, but it doesn't matter. Steve is now in a bit of trouble. Gets hooked in, gets hit by the, or gets the Chompers down, but it doesn't matter. And now Miller gonna look for another one, maybe number 13 here onto Crimson, who tries to get the best from below reset, but it doesn't matter. He's legendary again. Clyde now rolling up, next man up. The next challenger Let's does go in. The this. W does go off and get a lot of damage and a big shutdown, finally, for Pop, Pops. for Pop Pops. Able to get all that damage off with the W and Bruja barely gonna miss onto Cyborg here in the bot lane for what could have been an, another play for them. Super Death Rocket does come in and it snipes Dragons oh. and Hunter. Oh my word, it did so much damage there. Not expecting it at all. And Shun just beating down on this mid tower Look now. Look at Shun CS here. <laughs> Perfect CS in here for Shun Monster. Not a care in the world it, in the mid lane. Just farming it up for late game. I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> Looks like High Weebler now down four levels in the jungle. <laughs> Just gonna maybe take a reset in the Raptor pit. I'm not sure he knows what to do. I'm not sure there is anything he can do at this point, but he's certainly yeah. gonna try. I definitely feel bad for him. It's never a good feeling if you're going for an invade and your direct opponent gets three kills on you. That's <laughs> not what you wanna see, but We'll see. Once again, if they can cry and crawl their way back into this game, maybe look for some plays on the spot side. It's really the only place they've been able to uh, pull off plays successfully. Let's crank definitely shining through here, showing his prowess on the champ, landing some crazy hooks on the Jinx, keeping them as as in this game as they can be in this spot. As Pike hooks Miller, 
not gonna find anything else that could have been dangerous though. Landing that bone skewer. Wait for the cheeky steal onto the scuttle. Would have been oh, one small Miller's victory, here. but now Miller looking for High Weebler again. Gonna say hi and bye to him and pick up his Forky 14th kill. Now the flash suppression onto Cyborg, <laughs> BMing, and it won't pay off for OSU as he finally goes down. Inferno now going under the inner tower for Pop Pops. Dragonson Hunter in a bit of trouble now as well with Shun and Miller on the backside. Ruha flash hooks, but it whiffs. The Bone Skewer charging up onto Shun, but it doesn't matter. Miller still just running them down. Pike running around trying to get some resets. Shun will go down. Bye bye, doggy. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> OSU grabs Miller's 16th kill of the game here at 12 minutes. Lil Weeb is back. <laughs> He's back for more. Lands the Curse of the Sad Mummy on the Jinx there. Gets a shutdown on the Steve. <laughs> <laughs> picks up his first kill with those Moby, Moby boots, able to get up there real quickly, quicker than Steve expected, I guess, and uh, finally shut him down. Yeah, very curious to see what this uh, Amumu builds into. He's rocking the Moby boots. He definitely wants to be places, and he wants to be there quick. Also adding in some AP as Inferno, killing Pop Pops here, going in on Blitzcrank. Yeah, thought he had enough there. Crimson Samurai gonna get exhausted here as well, but it doesn't matter. The true damage execute will go off. Now Cyborg in a lot of trouble as well. Gonna take the 9k Ooh. damage from the death from below and get two nice uh, big cuts for Blitzcrank, I believe, as well as the Pike. Yeah, like I said, this Blitzcrank definitely putting in work for the side of Dakota State, showing Ohio State that uh, they may not have came here to play in a level one, but from then on, they are here to play. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, definitely, they're definitely still in this. If Pike can get strong enough, they can shut down Miller a couple more times. Dragonson Hunter Speaking now of that, trouble. Miller on the hunt, grabs the kill with the Gora yeah. Drinker, goes for number 17, and is really just chilling with that. He's not even, you know, hunting for kills anymore. They're just coming to him, basically. The Equinox does oh, go down Equinox. and scoots him up. Wow. Crimson Samurai does get away for now, but Super Mag Death Rocket big, provides a big chunk, and Miller finishes him off, grabs another double kill, looking for his third triple kill of the game, maybe onto Bruja, onto this tower, chasing him around the tower, but it's just He's not, not enough. Damage. He's not taking, He's not taking any damage. damage. The Cyborg helping him out, <laughs> and he goes to 20 kills here at 13 wow. minutes. Turret plating has not fallen but Miller's found his 20th kill on the game as now the middle inhibitor tower is in trouble on the side of Dakota State yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to pull through here for Dakota State and give them all the hope that I can but with a 20 and 1 and oh hi weeb alert off. he's going in he oh. doesn't care oh <laughs> he is... he's he's out here for the fun of it he's flashing and he's not even cursing them he is just flashing in. Looks and looking like he's building into that Everfrost. Going to full CC as M Miller back on the prowl. Yeah, Inferno found a kill on the top lane. But meanwhile, Crimson Samurai picks one up onto Cyborg. And he's trying to get away now. Inferno rolling up. But High Weebler running up there. He's got to be careful to avoid a 14 dayer here. But he does go in regardless. Smites down onto Inferno and not going to find anything for now. Crimson Samurai in a bit of a pickle i suppose but able to just slip out of there inferno dropping the counter strike and with the blast code lands <laughs> onto him procs that it perfectly what a nice pickup for steve in a game of a lot of kills that was a pretty cool looking one hi weevil now going yeah. in again dropping the curse of the sad mummy onto miller 68 but goes down 10th time this game not a great game for him but it doesn't matter pop pops onto steve and takes him down as now miller's in a bit of trouble again gets exhausted, exhausted. the undertow doesn't quite kill bruja because of that damage debuff and now the true damage won't be enough and he go goes no so way, he low lives. and How he does get shut say. down the death stance damage plus the uh the Malzahar damage over time does finally take him down at 22 kills. He'll find his second death. But yeah, I, I mean, just a dominating performance for OSU. They're just having fun at this point. Have, yeah, both teams definitely having fun here. Yeah, you know, High Weebler. Just messing around. He's got to be careful, I think. He's got to be careful. Yeah. I mean, he's looking at a 14-day ban if he keeps this up. <laughs> he's just running at them, throwing out his bandage tosses. He flashed in in the last fight, actually. Well, I guess it was two deaths ago, but he flashed in and missed the bandage toss, luckily for him, because I think he would have died almost instantly. But Crimson and Bruja now looking onto this dragon in the bot side. Maybe looking to pick Maybe it up. Maybe trying to deny, trying to oh. deny the Drake stat. <laughs> High Weebler is running at High Weebler is on the chase. <laughs> 
Now oh, Crimson. He might be able to get a good engage oh. here, actually. Now Crimson not able to find the Bones Cure. And now High Weevler in a lot of trouble again. Miller goes in with the yeah. Ragnarok, not able to be stopped. Pop Pup's in trouble now, too. Goes dismounted. Scarl runs away. Channeling the Bones Cure doesn't matter, as now the Nethergrass drops onto Miller, but leaves Dragon stuck between a rock and a hard place, as Inferno picks up a double kill there. Inferno now chasing down Bruja, or tries to grab the Hexgate, but it doesn't matter. Blocks the uh, Rocket Fist with the uh or the power fist rather with the counter strike and gets another kill there not gonna let that blitzcrank get away osu looking to maybe finish out this game here at 38 to 14 certainly have enough kills to do it yeah i definitely think hi we've learned he's uh, in again he's, he's the curse of the sad <laughs> mummy finds his 12th dead and he's gonna have a tough case to make but crimson samurai still finding a kill on the cyborg Nonetheless, able to grab his scrappy kills where he can. Steve picks him up there Best as well. Steve, the zap snipe. Yeah, Dragonson goes down as well. Miller going for 24, looking for 25 here, maybe onto Pop or Bruja, who are both just kind of chilling behind the Nexus now. Oh, he d <laughs> Inferno goes down. <laughs> Bruja lands another nice hook. The one bright spot, like you said, for Dakota State this game. Hi, we've learned he's in again. Finds number 13 as Crimson Samurai goes for the build. He finds his fifth zeal of the game in the base and looking to show that one off, but not going to respawn in time to do so as OSU takes down Dakota State 2-0 in what was a pretty, pretty decisive victory there. <laughs> that was definitely a game literally... 30 seconds in, I'm pretty sure we had a fiesta on our hands, <laughs> and it definitely delivered uh, both teams towards the end there, kind of just understanding that the game was over and having some fun. You really love to see that. Uh, good sports all around from Dakota State and Ohio State. Um, but not not really much to say about that <laughs> game other than a 3-0 Olaf at one minute, and I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, well, and they had the 2-0 Jinx. They didn't even end up needing that, it turned out. But... Yeah, yeah, just, Miller, <laughs> Miller finding 20-some kills. I didn't even keep track of how many he finished with. Yeah. It was at least 24, but either way, a stellar performance that he didn't even get to show off in Game 1, right? We saw Bio have a great, we thought, jungle performance in Game 1, but right. Miller came, he showed out, he showed up, and he showed off for sure on the uh, Olaf. Yeah, he showed game. off. He was... I missed game one. I had the. I there was a substitute. I'm the jungler. No, <laughs> definitely great showing though from uh, Miller. And honestly, you gotta give respect where respect is due. Dakota with a pretty spicy draft. If they were able to pull something crazy out with this draft, I would have given them all the props in the world. They brought the Malzahar ADC <laughs> into the Jinx. Honestly, I don't think it's a bad pick. Like if you're able to pull it off and kind of work around it stay safe hit level six you, you can live but anyways great games here from osu very decisive 2-0 over dakota state yeah i mean yeah you you said it best very decisive not even a lot to talk about you know in terms of fighting we didn't see a lot of big team fights just a lot of picks back and forth and um you know whatever it, it, osu really just came out with a big bounce back victory this week and with that being said, yep. we are live tomorrow at noon Eastern with the uh, CRL qualifiers for Rocket League. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, we're done here and we'll see you hopefully at noon tomorrow for that. Uh, I, you know, my name is Braden. I've been with Dom today and I know I had a lot of yep. fun. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody.